Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our third webinar of the summer for new students and families, um, our undergraduate students at Clark University. Uh, this is all about orientation and move-in and all of the exciting things to come in August um, and grow with the flow, which is our orientation 2022 theme. Uh, we are so excited that you have joined us today and I have a great uh, group of panelists to help kind of uh, explain out some things that will be happening over the next few weeks as uh, you and your students and your families arrive to campus. Um, want to begin, I'm Danielle Morgan Acosta, she, her pronouns. I serve as the Associate Dean of Students for Student Engagement and Belonging um, and get to work with all of these fine folks as they help um, plan for your arrival. Um, so would love for everyone to introduce themselves. I will start with Mike. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Hardy. I use he and his pronouns and I serve as the Associate Director for Student Leadership and Programming. So while I get to work with all the clubs and organizations on campus, I also have the pleasure to work with our peer mentors and putting together the orientation schedule. And uh, Kamaro? Uh, hello everyone, um, this is Kamar Abu Bakr and I'm the Associate Dean of Students for Community Living. Um, I oversee uh, our residential life and housing, as well as our community standard. Um, I'm excited to um, be here today with you all and, and answer your questions. And we're very fortunate we have two of our orientation coordinators here with us today. So Kayla, can you please start us off? Hi everyone, my name is Kayla Harris. I use she, her pronouns. I'm one of these five lovely OCs that you can see in this photo right here. Um, I am a senior majoring in biochemistry and molecular bio and um, your students will see me in the background of orientation as I'm not gonna be a PM, but I'm going to be helping out in the background. Nice to see you all. And Rose. Hi everyone, my name is Rose, I use she, her pronouns. I'm also working with Kayla as an orientation coordinator this summer. Um, I'm a rising senior majoring in international development and Spanish, and I'm really excited for orientation to start and to meet you all. And you'll see a photo of Glory. Glory as well as Sharon um, have been some of the students that have been emailing and corresponding with everybody over the summer from the orientation email account. So they're always there in the background. Uh, before we really dive into the content today, just want to remind folks for some housekeeping to use the Q&A feature. We will be answering questions um, via typing. Uh, throughout the presentation and take some questions for the full group once we get through all of this material. Uh, so please use that feature because then we can find your questions. Um, I want to start off just with, I know that our incoming students have done a lot of work. Um, so hopefully you've been following along out with your checklist off the orientation website. Um, there have been many requirements to make sure that you can register for classes, that you have your housing assignment, that your bill is all set. Um, and hopefully you've been able to tackle all of those. I will say there are a few that we have noticed um, that we still need folks to turn things in for. So your photo for your Clark ID, um, that is incredibly important because we print your ID uh, like next, this week, next week. Um, so to be able to make sure that you have access to your residence hall, that you're able to use the meal plan, that you're able to access the buildings on campus. Um, so please make sure that you have uploaded your photo and check to make sure that it's approved um, so that we can get all that taken care of. The other one is your health forms. I know there are a lot of health forms for health services. Be sure that you have submitted all of them um, and they are all complete. Um, it does, and I know sometimes it can be frustrating. You might have submitted your health forms, but you got your Friday email and it says it hasn't been submitted yet that or it's still pending. That just means that our nurses are working on updating all of your records and making sure everything is complete. So we are working as diligently as possible to get you the most accurate information. But please do make sure that you submit those prior to your arrival to campus. Um, and really this week is our goal. So we make sure that you have everything that you need. You notice there are some deadlines upcoming in August. So to set up your refund profile, for um, being able to receive a refund from Clark 
uh, based on your payment or your bill and paying your bill or setting up your bills options for the fall semester. Also received, our students received an email last week about all of your deadlines for your pre-orientation requirements. These are all due before you arrive to campus. Um, and if you're part of a pre-orientation program, they're really due before August 21st. And there are some tasky things, but also a lot of information about Clark that will help get you situated for all the things you need to know once you are on campus. So that is logging into Moodle, Moodle and completing your academic integrity module. It is making sure you know how to connect to the Clark network and register your device. It is um, completing your Get Inclusive online modules. Get Inclusive is really our pre-orientation online orientation. And so you should have received an email today and you can log in with your Clark credentials and you will notice a series of modules or kind of like little mini classes that you need to take um, about hazing and alcohol, about consent in Title IX, about mental health and about resources that are at Clark. So please do make sure that you complete all of those before the August 21st deadline. You do need to set aside some time to make sure that you are able to complete all of those because they, they do take a little while to go through all of the modules. You received an email and we'll continue receiving a few more um, about the Higher Education Research Institute, the freshman survey. This is super important. It tells us so much about you um, and about your incoming class and also gives us great information to build out programs and services for you. It is required, so please do make sure that you respond to that email and fill out that survey. You also received information about uploading your COVID vaccination information to our COVID portal. Many of you probably provided your COVID vaccination information on your health forms. This is an additional portal where you will upload your vaccine card information, as well as when you received your shots and your boosters, or request an exemption, um, a medical or religious exemption. Um, this is really important for us to be able to track the safety of our campus and needs to be done prior to your arrival. Um, you also need to download the CORC app, which is how you're going to access orientation, which I know some of our folks will be talking about later on in this webinar. Um, and make sure that any of those outstanding tasks are completed. We need to make sure that you are totally set and ready once you arrive to campus. And so arrival is rapidly approaching. We're actually very excited that our first group of incoming students, our ACE students and our ACE Institute, um, are moving in this Sunday. Um, so just want to note that you will be going to Sackler for all of our pre-orientation programs or programs um, that are working with particular areas. You're receiving detailed information via your Clark email about where to go and what to do for those things. Um, the Connections program move-in is Saturday, August 20th. You will also begin at Sackler. Um, our international welcome is Monday, August 22nd, and you will check in at the International Center. Um, Throughout August, there might be times that some of our incoming athletes are moving in. So check in with athletics about the best and your coach in particular about how you'll be moving in um, and where you should go to get all of your information. Then starting Wednesday, August 24th, that is when we are have all incoming undergraduate students begin at ASIC. And I will show you that on the map. So our student accessibility services early orientation is Wednesday, August 24th and begins at ASIC. Our first year student orientation is Thursday, August 25th and begins at ASIC. And then for our sophomore, junior and senior transfer students, um, orientation will begin on that Friday, August 26th in ASIC. So all of this information can be found online and in your email, but just sending a reminder to make sure that it's fresh on your mind about where you should be heading. On that first move-in day, we'll also have a family uh, program going on. So obviously in the morning, we'll be uh, focusing on that move-in, um, uh, ASEC. Uh, families and, and students are welcome to eat at the Higgins Dining Center. We will provide some meal tickets for folks to have uh, meals together at lunch. And then we'll also be doing a commuter check-in um, at ASEC as well. The new student family orientation welcome is gonna be kicked off with, by uh, some speeches from our president, our dean of students, as well as the president of the student body. This is where students will depart and go with their peer mentors and families will stay in in the Neller for some continued programming. 
That programming includes a, a resource panel. So a variety of resources from all around campus will be available to answer questions. And that will lead into a new uh, family uh, welcome or reception where you're able to leave a postcard for your student and then sort of, uh, sort of get ready to leave for the day. We will also be having a student athlete family info session that is run by our director of athletics. Um, and that's sort of the, the new family orientation um, for that Thursday. In terms of arriving to campus, um, as we mentioned, for those uh, Wednesday through Friday, we'll be uh, transfer, we'll have everyone check in at uh, ASAC. So that's the Shake Family Alumni and Student Engagement Center. Um, this is where folks will sort of send their student into the building. Uh, we ask that all families, friends, loved ones stay in the vehicle. Only send your student in so they can get all their, their things. So they'll get their schedule, uh, their badge of uh, swag for orientation, their keys and uh, one card. Um, and so this is where they'll do everything, get ready to go. So students will come in, check out, and then they'll proceed to their move-in and orientation uh, sessions. Moving. Sorry. Hello, everyone. This is Kamara again. Uh, so in order for us to make sure that uh, you move in uh, well and also as catering to your needs, um, we, are, we'll be, we will be providing a red card. Uh, they will be available to assist with moving things um, from cars to rooms. Uh, many buildings do not, unfortunately, many of our buildings do not have elevators, um, but we do have people who will be helping you move in your items. So that will be great. Um, you may park near buildings to unload and then move cars to a designated parking space. There will be a map and directions on how you'll be able to manage that so you don't have to worry about it when you get here. Uh, keys and IDs will definitely be available at a check-in station. Um, as Daniel already mentioned earlier on, uh, just make sure that your, uh, you upload your uh, IDs, um, your photos, so that you can get your IDs as soon as you get here is very critical um, in order for you to make your moving in smoothly. And uh, next one, I'll, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the help that you all be needing. Um, so orientation staff, you already uh, heard from our lovely uh, Kayla and Rose uh, who introduced themselves, as they already mentioned, there's about five of them. Um, these students have had tremendous experience in being leadership roles and they've been in trainings uh, where uh, they are, the skills and, and knowledge to be able to help your, uh, your students. Um, residential life and housing staff, uh, currently we have about 42 uh, RAs. Um, these are all undergraduate students as well who uh, are all over campus. Uh, they, they make sure that they provide um, programming initiatives, all those kind of stuff to make sure that your students transition well on campus. And we do have also uh, professional staff members who live in the residential halls. And these are full-time professionals who have their, uh, mostly have their master's degree in higher education administration. Um, so they are well qualified to work with your students and make sure that they transition well and also help um, retain them here on campus. Um, the resident advisors, as I mentioned earlier on, um, there's 42 of them, which are, uh, are uh, student staff. Um, they go through tremendous training um, and are provided with tools and resources for them to make sure that uh, they provide your students with the necessary equipments that they need for them to succeed here at Clark Universities. Uh, we also have the peer mentors uh, who are assigned to uh, different students. These are all students, also undergraduate students who have been trained um, to become mentors and they are amazing group of people um, who would also help your students transition. And you will, see, you will see all these folks during orientation as well. Um, student affairs staff, this is one of the biggest staff we have here on campus, uh, ranging from the Counseling Center to the um, residential life and housing and student leadership and programming. Um, these are all uh, professional staff members who um, engage with students uh, almost every single day to make sure that your students uh, feel that they have the support they need 
um, or a grown-up who's going to be working with them to make sure that they succeed here on campus. So this is an, an amazing opportunity for all your students to be successful here at Clark University. Uh, and also we do have upper class students um, who would be also working um, with your students. They'll be uh, available um, anytime your students need them um, to be able to um, understand what it means to be on a college campus by sharing their own experiences of how they were able to transition, the challenges that they had, how they uh, managed uh, their classes and whatnot to be able to be successful or be where they are today. Thanks, Kamaro. Um, want to just show this image for folks that are moving in on Thursday, August 25th. So for first year student orientation, but not for any of the others, just because we have such an influx of incoming students coming in, there are some road closures. So like we mentioned for student accessibility services, early orientation, for first year orientation on Thursday, August 25th, and for sophomore, junior, and senior transfer student orientation on August 26th, all, everyone will check in here at the ASIC building, on um, which you will enter on Main Street. It is across from a big building, kind of with all the pictures and the Freud statue, if you have had the opportunity to come to campus. On Thursday, you will see um, a lot of street kind of management, so you'll know kind of where to go. Students will check in in ASIC. And that's where, as Mike shared, they'll get all of their information. Then they will proceed to um, their residence hall. You will receive this map at check-in. Um, anytime that you check in on campus, you're gonna receive a map, but particularly on Thursday with some of these directionals, we just wanna make sure that folks have a good understanding because of the road closures. So we will have support of how everyone will kind of start at ASIC and, um, Families or folks that are coming with students to move in, or even if students just need to park their car to come check in themselves, park in the ASIC lot. Um, families will stay, families and friends that come will stay with, uh, will stay in the car as their student comes in and gets all of their information to check in. Then they will loop around campus. They will um, have these color flags you'll be able to see depending on where you are going um, based on where your residence hall lives. And we'll give you a little card that helps explain that. Um, on Thursday, you will see lots of volunteers and kind of folks directing you. Um, but we will kind of have changed up some of these roads and blocked different access points to campus. So if you are putting it into your Google map or whatever, don't put in your residence hall, put in ASIC. Um, and then from there, we will kind of direct you to where you will go. You will be able to drive up relatively close to the buildings on the side of the road. We will have volunteers on Thursday with the red bins to help you unload your car. Um, the cars will then go to one of the many parking spaces that we have across campus um, while the student goes up with the carts and kind of unloads everything. So these will all be loading zones right in front of Wright Hall. Um, this is Dodd Hall, so right kind of in front of on Florence Street. It's an easier pathway in front of Hughes, in front of Dana, and then on Maywood Street right here, which is a direct shot to Bullock Hall. So this will help people get their cars in, unload their cars, get the cars parked, and then you can really spend some time moving into your spaces. On those other days for moving, like I said, for um, facing connections, you'll be probably parking in this Maywood admissions visitor spot and going to Sackler to check in. Um, and then for student accessibility services, early orientation, and for transfer orientation, you'll be going to ASIC, getting your information and then proceeding to your residence hall. We're gonna turn it back over to Mike just to talk a little bit about orientation. Yeah, so I think sometimes students don't know always what they're getting into when they talk about going to orientation, but we really want to be the focus to be that transition to campus and college. We really, really want to make sure people are feeling connected, getting to meet some new people, both in their peer or their group, uh, as well as outside of their group, uh, getting to know their peer mentor and just really starting to make friends. Uh, students are going to be, uh, become aware of the issues that they'll sort of encounter in their college experience and also really have a focus on thinking about their identity and what does that mean with that identity to be on our campus. 
Um, students will also learn about all the resources that are sort of on campus. And ultimately, we're really trying to prepare students for, the, for their life, both academically and socially at Clark. Really, orientation is sort of the kickoff of the entire sort of onboarding once you sort of get to campus on um, that when we're sort of planting seeds for what will come um, within their first semester. Now we would love to turn it over to our orientation coordinators to share a little bit about um, what they've been planning for orientation and what are some things that students can expect. And so Rose and Kayla, take it away. Okay, so what to exactly to expect for orientation? So after the move in, after everybody gets settled in, um, we go into the Neller where there's um, speakers and different introductions to Clark. Um, so that is large full group and half group events. And then we eventually break out into smaller groups with peer mentors. So there's a lot of peer mentors this year as it is a larger incoming class. So there should be about groups of maybe like nine or 10. I don't know, Mike can add in on that, but they're going to be bigger but smaller groups of peer mentors, um, of mentees with the peer mentors. And then there's going to be conference style sessions. So there's going to be sessions where peer mentors do things with the mentees, and then there's going to be conference style sessions where different departments of Clark come in and talk to um, all the first year students. There are also going to be resident hall programming and meetings. Um, there's a lot of getting to know the building, getting to know um, different support systems on Clark's campus. So that's pretty big. There's going to be hard to Clark, how to Clark activities. So that's like how to sign into your account, how to go to Moodle, all those different things so that a student is prepared when they go into their first day of classes. There's also going to be Clark after dark activities. Rose can touch more on that if she would like. Um, yeah, so Clark after dark is going to be what happens on the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night of orientation. So basically once you're all moved in, and during the day you like attended these info sessions and then in the evening it's just fun activities that you can go to some are more um high energy like we're preparing a roller skating night and um some more like outdoor games type of things and then other things that are more mellow in case you're kind of tired from all the moving in you've done like um board games potting plants things that are more low-key and in an effort to just create a space for new students to interact with each other and get to know each other um, in a more calm setting. And then um, there will be during orientation affinity meetups. So like affinity spaces for students to meet um, each other if they share an identity and become familiar with each other. There will also be um, meetings with your first year student success advisor, which is a, a member of staff that will be available for first years throughout the year to kind of check in on them and make sure that um, they're basically a resource for like an additional resource for your student to um, have another set of eyes on them and make sure that they know that they have someone else to go to um, for academic needs and support. And then there will be convocation, which is a sort of formal welcome to the academic year with um, the deans of the college and the president Etc. And then on the Sunday afternoon, there will be a welcome barbecue with the entire um, campus is welcome to attend on the green. So here we have a couple of pictures from actually this past year's move in. Um, this past year's move in was crazy going back from being in person after COVID. So um, here you can see that on the left is move-in. So there's peer mentors, there's different clubs, there's student athletes, parents, staff, all able to help a student make sure they find their dorm, make sure their key works, make sure they can get into the building, help unload the stuff, whatever a, the student needs. There's so many resources that will be around campus to help. Then on the right, we have different, um, it looks like we have two PMs that combine their group to do um, icebreakers. That is a huge thing for move in as you're meeting a bunch of strangers all at once. So there's a bunch of different icebreakers that we do in the groups and it's so fun. 
And it's pretty nice and relaxing on the first day because movement is so hectic. Um, something else to like be aware of is that during move-in and orientation, there will be um, international student welcome and student accessibility services move-in. So those are other opportunities um, for those people that moved in beforehand to meet um, the rest of the student body that will be moving in on the Thursday. So a lot of the activities will be, like all of the activities will be including everyone so that all students have a chance to meet each other even if they got there on different days. Um, another a really big part of orientation is getting to know people. So right here, you can see there's a bunch of different students meeting each other. Actually, this is Rose and I's class on the left. Um, but you get into these large groups as well. A lot of peer mentors mix their groups. That way you can meet people of who might be the same as you. So there's a bunch of athletes who mix with each other, a bunch of people from the same affinity spaces. So it's really great to not only be within your small group of PMs and have your PM who will help you not only through orientation, but also past orientation. And maybe you might meet a best friend in your PM group. I still talk to a bunch of the people from my freshman orientation peer mentor groups and overall orientation, it seems kind of overwhelming because you know, you're going to a new space, but there are so many resources that Clark gives you and that the people at orientation give you that make you feel end up feeling so, so comfortable and so ready to start school. Also, just to add to what Kayla was saying, I'd mentioned that like we have talked a lot about how these are like big group activities and spaces where everyone is meeting each other, but there are also a lot of opportunities for um, more one-on-one -on -one interactions and like more low-key things because we understand that like it's a lot to be in a new space with all these different people and like that can be difficult for some students but there's definitely kind of a range of um, sort of experiences that allow people to meet each other in like a variety of ways and it's not just like all really big group type of thing. Last thing I just want to throw in too, sorry, Danielle. Um, it, I see a bunch of questions asking about peer mentors. Upcoming, right before orientation, we're going to be posting pictures of most of the peer mentors and a little bit of bio about them. So if you want to follow the Instagram um, at Clark U Orientation, upcoming posts will be showing. Um, there's already posts showing the first year success advisors, and there's going to be a bunch showing the peer mentors. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, orientation is sort of the kickoff of sort of getting you uh, acclimated to campus at Clark. That will continue on in Clark Navigator. So the groups that you'll be in um, with your peer mentor will uh, continue on in the fall. And this will be sort of a transitional sort of course uh, that you'll meet weekly with your peer mentor to stay connected with your group and just really get to know each other better. There'll be a variety of workshops that happen each Wednesday or each week for um, these uh, groups. And um, this sort of range from sort of getting to know folks, getting to know resources. And during the week uh, two of the Navigator, all students will actually be attending the involvement fair on campus to better get to know the clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, and so they're, we're creating these um, intentional opportunities to sort of understand the campus a little bit more. And really, we just want to make sure that you uh, really have a great first year experience on campus. And the Clark Navigator is a continuation of that after orientation. That's a lot of information. Um, and I know we've been answering a lot of questions. Um, so also just want to make sure while we have your attention, to share with you just some important dates to make sure that you have these. Um, these will also be included. Uh, you can find them online. They'll be in the family guide, which will be coming out probably early next week. And then in the student guide uh, book, which will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. But we've talked about all of our orientation sessions and all of our move-ins for August. Um, and then the first day of classes is August 29th. Um, some things to keep in mind for the fall is that September 5th, there are no classes. It's a long weekend. September 7th is when ad drop ends. So that's your last opportunity to change your schedule for the fall semester. Um, September 9th is the last day to request meal plan changes. 
You'll see in mid-September that room change requests begin. So there is a two-week kind of time. There's a freeze period to make sure that everybody gets settled before we start, um, before residential life and housing will start doing room change requests. Fall break is October 10th and 11th. So that Monday and Tuesday, there are no classes. And then family and friends weekend, where we hope to see uh, many folks, is October 14th and 16th. It's hard to be talking about November in August, but November 23rd through 26th is Thanksgiving break, so there are no classes. And then finals are the 15th, 16th, 19th, and 20th. In between those dates, there'll be some study time, what we call um, reading days to catch up and prepare for your exams. The residence halls close at noon on December 21st, um, and the Spring semester begins on January 17th, which is the first day of classes, but students can move back to campus that Sunday, I believe, January 15th. Just some notes. Um, as we go into questions, I want to clarify one that I saw, and then I'll turn it over to some staff based on some other questions that we saw um, about the pre-orientation programs. So students might have registered for a pre-orientation program, an in-person pre-orientation experience, ACE, Connections, the International Welcome, or the SAS Early Orientation for Student Accessibility Services. Um, those pre-registrations, there were applications and communications that went out from those offices. All of those students continue to participate in either first year or a transfer student orientation. Um, those programs are a little different. Uh, they're either leadership experiences, some are taking classes, others are getting some extra time to move in and learning a bit more about the offices that they provide. Um, so the content during the orientation weekend is really important. Um, and as uh, the students and Mike mentioned, you'll also be with your peer mentor. Um, for most of our students, that will be the group of students that they are taking their first year intensive class and their navigator with. And so building that community is very important. Um, I did see a question, um, and I think we started to answer it, but there was a question about clubs. Um, and how do you get to know and learn more about the clubs that are at Clark or maybe try to join some of them um, even now before you arrive to campus? Uh, Mike, do you want to start that one? And then I don't know if the OCs might have some additional advice. Yeah, absolutely. So um, right now, one of the key things that we ask people to do is set up a profile in Clark Engage. Clark Engage is sort of a hub for student involvement on campus. This is where you can see all the active clubs on campus. Um, so you can A, sort of see what's available, see what you want to join. You can reach out to those organizations and sort of uh, start that communication. Some of the clubs may not be responsive right now just because it is sort of the summertime, but it's a good starting off point to sort of see what's available on campus. It's also a great way to sort of see what maybe is not on campus and maybe get you going to start thinking about if you want to start a new club on, on, on Clark. Um, then, obviously, we'll be talking more about clubs during orientation. As I mentioned earlier, the involvement fair will be happening September uh, 7th, uh, and all students will be going to that through the Navigator. And that'll be a chance to uh, better get to know those groups and to see what's going on on campus. But definitely, uh, Clark Engage, so that's engage.clarku.edu. If you haven't already logged in, please go ahead and do so. This is also where you'll be able to find the orientation schedule of events. Um, and that's also why we're asking folks to download the Cork app so that they'll, they'll be able to have it on their phone. Um, but definitely engage is sort of that first place I would encourage folks to look into to see what's available on campus. Thanks, Mike. Rose and Kayla, do you have any advice to um, students about clubs? Yeah, um, I would say there's no rush to join a club. Um, it takes a little bit to find the club. So I know that for me, um, when we had a club fair, I signed up to a bunch of clubs. And it's when you when you write your name down for them to email you, it's not an instant requirement that you are in that club. You can go to the first meeting. If you get a good vibe and you want to stay there, you stay. If you don't, you don't have to. It's it's awesome. I am part of club volleyball. Um, I was part of, there was a Best Buddies before, but it unfortunately had to stop during COVID. But I met some great people throughout that. And I got in touch with other people from other clubs because there, a lot of clubs do um, a combination. So honestly, clubs 
they're a great resource for, um, for meeting friends, especially. So I would recommend joining a club. But also, if you can't find the one necessary for you in the first couple of weeks of school, there's no rush. You, you will find one that is for you. I would add that um, if you're nervous, kind of the opposite problem, like you're nervous that you won't have enough time to be involved in clubs. Maybe like if you're a student athlete or you're nervous about your course load or something like that, um, clubs offer events all the time that are not like you know you don't need to be going to the weekly meeting to just participate in an event um so just know that like there's a way to be involved um in a variety of ways basically like you don't have to just think that one kind of student is able to participate in things because they have like a very free schedule like you can make it work depending on um what you've committed to or not I have seen some questions just about move-in, um, risers and communicating with your roommate. Um, Kamaro, would you like to kind of just chat through some of what the process looks like in those rooms? Um, and uh, best ways, maybe, maybe the students have some good ideas about best ways to communicate um, with an incoming roommate. Yeah, I saw something similar earlier on in terms of the question. So yes, it's normal um, if you email uh, your roommate and you don't hear back from them. Um, it can be due to many reasons, um, being that you're still on vacation. Um, some of them um, might not be uh, using their email yet and all that kind of stuff. But um, what I've seen um, other students do is uh, try to connect with them on social media um uh platform um and i know it can be challenging for you to do that if that's uh something that you're not into but um, that's another way to try to connect with students um but as i said earlier on it's normal if you don't hear from the students and i understand how frustrating can be that can be um so continue trying um but i'll let the i'll let the uh how do you call it, the, uh, the OCs to kind of uh, talk a little bit about that as well. I would say, honestly, even if it's uncomfortable, like don't be afraid to reach out if that's something you wanna do, just because um, you'll be like, it's gonna be awkward when you meet in person too. So just, it's okay if you send a bit of a like awkward, I don't know, DM or something. Um, I. FaceTimed with my freshman year roommate before I moved in I didn't like we didn't choose each other we were randomly assigned and like I it was a little awkward but it was also helpful to just kind of know like what she was bringing and what I was bringing um just to not have like two of the same like appliance or whatever um so I would say if you like want to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and do that reaching out um definitely could be helpful but also it's not an imperative And uh, I want to respond to a quick one that I saw rather than typing it. Um, do you have advice for three students who will be sharing? I think, Rose, that's, you spoke about this a little bit, I think. Um, yes. So usually what um, Rose mentioned was accurate. If you're able to, if you end up connecting with a student, we encourage you to talk about the items that you are bringing, right? If you think about I'm bringing a TV. You don't have to bring two TVs uh, to the room. Um, one should be okay. And then the other person can bring something else. Um, is it a mini fridge? Um, you all can share that as well. Um, so being in constant communication with each other about who is bringing what and whatnot, I think is uh, uh, helps a lot in terms of navigating um, this space. And I also shared earlier on that our room, our rooms are um, big enough to accommodate uh, three students. Um, so they will be having a desk and they will be having a storage um, as usual for each um, individuals. Wonderful, thank you everybody. Looking to see if there's any more questions that might make sense. Um, 
is a question just about Clark Navigator. Um, students, when first year students, when they've been registering for their classes with their advisor, have been registering for an FYI and then registering for a Navigator class. So it should show up on their academic schedule for the fall. Um, there is a special uh, Navigator for our sophomore, junior, and transfer students as well, um, should they be interested. Um, and so those all take place at the same time, like many of our classes do. Um, so it'll be built into your schedule so as not to conflict um, with anything else and be connected to kind of that experience that you're having in the fall semester. There was also a question about the status email updates and those those go out most every Friday to your Clark email. Um, I will say Microsoft uh, Outlook is it thinks it's very smart. And so if there's one or two of those emails that maybe you did not open, um, be sure to check your clutter or your junk mail just to make sure. And then it has a long list of all of those things that you saw on the checklist um, that's been on the to-do list as well for the website with kind of your status or what we believe your status is, usually as of 24 hours prior. Um, so be sure to check that and see if there's anything that you feel like is missing. And if you email orientation at clarku.edu, um, we will be able to connect you and figure out what's going on. Um, I also saw an email about someone who might not be responding. Um, if that's an office or a department, um, or an advisor or anybody at all, feel free to email orientation at clarku.edu. Um, there is a question for the residence halls about an air conditioner and a mini fridge. Um, would you like to uh, take that question, Kamar? Um, so in terms of uh, air conditioning, we, do, we currently do not have air conditioning in, in our buildings. Um, we have one in our upper class areas, um, but that's an, uh, a central AC. Um, and then with the mini fridges, uh, we have a company uh, on campus that usually delivers um, the mini fridges. And if you go on uh, our website, at, um, residential life and housing website, you would see that information and you'll be able to order for the mini fridge, uh, which comes with a microwave on top of it um, and then they will deliver it directly to your um, room without you carrying it from home. And let's just stay on the micro fridge train for just a second. Um, the micro fridges that are rented from the company, um, the question is, do they have freezers in them? I never paid attention to that, but let me check in real quick. But yeah, I'll look at it and, and I'll let you know right away. I believe that they do. They have a little freezer. Sometimes they come I with believe that they, yeah. I believe that they do too, but they. I would keep in mind they are small. <laughs> I had one my freshman year and they are small. <laughs> and then there is a question about the Cork app if that is for students or for families as well. Um, someone wanna take that one? Yeah, so the Cork app is designed for students specifically. So you'll need Clark credentials in order to log in and select the Clark University so you can see all the events that are happening. This app is not just for orientation. It'll be for all the events that are available for students throughout um, the, the school year. And so um, this will just this one is primarily for students to use. We will have a schedule for parents uh, that's available on the website, as well as printed off the day out for their um, events, that, for their orientation stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for all of your questions. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, we are so excited to meet you, new students, to meet your new family members and our new community members, um, and to have folks participate in the variety of orientation programs and just to have campus come back to life again. If you have any questions, um, as it's been quiet for the summer, um, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to email orientation at clarku.edu. 
Um, and we will uh, see you on the next webinar. There's actually one later this week for students that are interested um, in the Becker School. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much to our panelists. Um, and we will see you soon on campus.